In this CPI IAPS policy brief, I look at the role and challenges of Chinese development assistance in Myanmar. The development landscape is shifting. China's emergence as a non-traditional development donor is challenging traditional donor countries such as Australia, Canada, UK and the US, part of the Development Assistance Committee, or DAC. After years of ambivalence, Beijing is renewing its relations with its Southeast Asian neighbours in trade and development cooperation. The re-establishment of ties with Southeast Asia is predicated upon the need for China to secure its energy supplies as the Chinese economy continues to grow, albeit at a slower rate. However, China is also well aware of the growth potential of its neighbours such as Cambodia and Myanmar. These nations are therefore significant trading partners and sites for Chinese manufacturing opportunities where labour is cheap. Since Myanmar's transition to a civil government, it has one of the highest growth rates in the region, exceeding 7% per annum, and it is heavily driven by foreign direct investment. Southeast Asia presents a market of 600 million people for Chinese goods and services, a significant boon for slowing Chinese economy. From a development perspective, Chinese aid and development assistance is not new, but it has shifted from being driven by Maoist-era ideology to one that is flexible and pragmatic. At present, Chinese development assistance focuses on non-interference, mutual benefit, infrastructure-led growth and demand-driven cooperation. In Southeast Asia, China has provided a full range of development assistance, including soft loans, debt cancellation and interest-free loans. Moreover, the Chinese state has actively assisted and invested in Southeast Asian nations' infrastructure. In the case of Myanmar, China is a long-term economic partner and ally, but this partnership is being challenged by Myanmar's democratization. China is Myanmar's most significant and largest investor to date. China's involvement in Myanmar must be seen in the context of Myanmar's political transition, which is providing new space and opportunities for Burmese civil society all factors challenging China's long-standing position in the country. The Chinese government, organisations and companies have the capacity to develop sustainable development and be effective development partners with the Burmese. However, the asymmetrical nature of Sino-Burmese partnership firmly tilted in favour of Chinese economic, political and strategic interests is starting to change. As Myanmar re-engages and re-establishes its international friendships, it is diversifying its economic, social and political support, thereby reducing its over-dependency on China. Furthermore, China's own democratic def deficit are significant impediments to its overseas development assistance policies. At the same time, China does have a significant development experience to share though, lifting over 700 million Chinese out of poverty in just two decades, from 1981 to 2010, and propelling China to global economic and political prominence. Myanmar's emerging civil society activism has already had an impact on Chinese economic interests in Myanmar. The shelving of the China-backed Mitsone Dam on the Irrawaddy River under the Tianjin government in the late 2011 is attributed to the success of Burmese civil society. Those opposing the dam have cited irreversible environmental damage and displacement of communities. Burmese civil society representatives look towards the West, in particular the United States, for development assistance. China's top-down approach to economic cooperation and development will prove difficult for civil society cooperation to occur between the two countries. China's engagement with Myanmar has reached a critical juncture since its post-2011 reforms. Myanmar's political transition presents new challenges for Beijing's leadership. As Chinese engagement with Myanmar is framed by its national economic interests, this has come under domestic and international civil society scrutiny. Increasing protests against Chinese-backed projects, particularly in the natural resource sector, threatens the Chinese position in the country. 
Beijing needs to reframe its partnership to incorporate a development component, one that seeks to address the existing asymmetry and provides opportunities for all stakeholders to be part of the development, notably civil society groups and communities that are affected by Chinese economic interests. Myanmar offers China a wealth of natural resources and is strategically located. Gas and oil routed through the Indian Ocean into Myanmar and onto China reduces the Chinese dependence on the Middle East. While China's growth has slowed considerably, the desire to sustain growth and meet domestic de consumer demands means China needs to secure resources for continual growth. In the last quarter of 2013, China became the largest net importer of oil, yet much of China's development assistance is framed as economic cooperation, and such cooperation as reflected in business practices have failed to win general Burmese support. Large-scale projects such as the Mitsun Dam, Lepidong Copper Mine and Kyak Fu Gas Pipeline has drawn the attention and opposition of civil society representatives. Chinese companies such as the China Power Investment have been accused of not providing enough safeguards against environmental damage. Accusations of land grabs and contracts that favour the Chinese have increased anti-Chinese sentiments in Myanmar. The Chinese are seeking to make amends. The Chinese embassy in Yangon has instructed all SOEs operating in Myanmar to undertake corporate social responsibility training. Such actions have proved insufficient to address continuing concerns and demands of the Burmese civil society. China's own political culture has shaped its engagement with other nations. That is a strong preference for a state-to-state -state and government-to-government -government style of relationship. Myanmar's reforms have opened up new space for civil society actors and the media, all of which have become roadblocks for furthering Chinese interests in Myanmar. China was slow to recognise the influence of civil society on domestic politics and Burmese development. Burmese civil society representatives are sceptical with regards to Chinese promotion and mutual benefit and South-South cooperation. Lack of know-how and skills to effectively engage with Burmese civil society will jeopardise China's legitimacy and its status as an economic and development partner in Myanmar. Nonetheless, China has started to acknowledge the importance of civil society actors to deepen cooperation with its neighbours. As a mechanism to build trust and cooperation at the regional level, China and the Association for Southeast Asian Nations established high-level people-to-people dialogue with the first meeting in 2013 involving civil society representatives across the region. Whether these moves are sufficient to win the trust and respect of Burmese civil society actors will remain to be seen.